This is Twit. We have we now have evidence that uh, Neil Mehta of Google Security discovered Heartbleed no later than March 21st. So Google was aware of it several weeks before its official unveiling. Then um, later in the morning, we had we have a time stamp on this one at 10.23 a.m. And all of these are are, are Google time, essentially Pacific time. Uh, Bodo uh, Mueller and Adam Langley. Adam is, of course, famous for, we were talking about him often. He's made deep into the security of of Chrome and the um, and the whole Google Chrome and Chromium project, they commit a patch. Oh, that's how we know the time because of the timestamp. They commit a patch for the flaw. This is according to the timestamp on the patch file Google created and later sent to OpenSSL, which OpenSSL forwarded to Red Hat and others. The patch is then progressively applied to Google services and servers across the globe. So Google. Essentially, Google discovered this. And I was also originally unclear about how this Codenomicon deal happened. Turns yeah, so out... It was two researchers, but Codenomicon was in Mountain View, right? Well, or he but was in the... It, no, he, he's actually Finnish. Yeah, but he was in the was, States. No, he, well, I don't know where he was physically located, right. but it was an independent discovery. It was independent, okay. Yeah, so that's what was in, and in fact, it was due to the dual independent discovery that suddenly people started getting worried that if people, if this, you know, like lightning can strike once, and it's like, well, okay, you know, what are the chances of it striking again in the same place? Well, it struck twice in the same place. So suddenly they were, you know, so th th that sort of amped up the concern that this needed to get remediated. So, uh, so ten days went by after March after the first indication we have of Google knowing of it on March twenty first. On the thirty first, the last day of March, um, someone tells con and we don't know really who, but we just know when because we know what content di uh, distribution network Cloudflare about Heartbleed and Cloudflare patches against it. And then later boasts on its blog about how they were able to protect their clients before many others were protected. So there was, there was, so there's, there's sort of a, a pact of secrecy among a small group, um, which begins to fragment as leaks spring. And, you know, and, and, and of course, this is much easier to reassemble retrospectively than it is, you know, at the time. Then on April Fool's Day, which was the, the the Tuesday, a week before we were rep we were first reporting on Heartbleed, which only happened the night before the April eighth podcast, which was last week's podcast. So a week before that, Google Security notifies OpenSSL about the flaw it's found in OpenSSL, uh, which then becomes known as Heartbleed. Mark Cox at OpenSSL says the following on social network on, on, on Google Plus. He says, quote, original plan was to push a fix that week, but it was postponed until April 9th to give time for proper processes. And of course, even that April 9th date didn't stick because we found out about it on, on the 7th. Um, then on the, on the 2nd, which would have been, you know, the, the day... Well, obviously after April Fool's. In fact, I would have been worried about April Fool's announcement, but yeah. uh, for all the reasons we talked about. Then on the, on April 2nd, a Finnish IT security testing firm, Codenomicon, separately discovered the same bug uh, that Neil found at Google in, in of course, you know, the same thing, the, the, the heartbeat, the open SSL bug. Um, Friday on on April 4th, Content distribution network Akamai patches its servers. Um, they initially say, and it's interesting too, because again, there's they know that they've done things that they can't disclose. They initially say OpenSSL told them about the bug, but the OpenSSL core team denies this in an email interview, which was conducted by this reporter. Then Akamai updates its blog after the denial 
And Akamai's blog then says that an individual in the open SSL community told them not part of the core team. Um, then f rumors. It turns out there are rumors on Friday, April 4th, within the open source community about there being a bug in open SSL, but nobody has any details. So it ends up just being ignored. It's like, well, you can't tell me anything more. Okay. <laughs> you know, so it's just a rumor. And then finally on April 5th, when this is something that sort of puzzled people was how it was that this uh, Heartbleed site sprung into existence with a cool logo, as several noted. So it was on Saturday, April 5th, that the Codenomicon group purchased the heartbeat, heartbleed.com domain name and apparently began working on a cool, you know, dripping blood logo uh, for the whole thing. And if anyone's curious, this goes on to talk about the, the timeline after we've all found out about it, but which is, you know, less interesting to me. So, you know, th th that to me, this is sort of a, a snapshot into how the, you know, the actual world deals with something that they're hugely concerned about. You know, I mean, initially Google believes it's the only organization that knows about this. Um, they very quietly take care of their own network to, because I mean, again, this is this, you know, we talked about last week, this, the whole cat and mouse problem of when we announce this, it's going to take time for people to fix their servers. And in that window from announce time to fix time, there's, you know, a real heightened vulnerability. And in fact, uh, Bruce said on your Twit podcast on Sunday, Leo, he, he, he w w one of the many things that was interesting that Bruce commented on, he said, you know, a very careful look at logs have, have not revealed widespread scanning behavior. So, you know, looking at there, you know, there are organizations that just capture everything, not just like protocol level or, or you know, like, the, the logs on an HTTP server that only shows specific requests, you know, get and post requests to the server, but actual raw traffic logs. Um, and, and they're big because they have everything in them, but that's also why they're valuable is that they allow you then to retrospectively go back and look for things that you didn't know at the time were important but you later learn are important. And then you want to know, whoa, was this going on before? 